Hey gang, today we're going to do one of the epic solos from the early 80s. It's Fight the Good Fight by Triumph, Rick Emmett on guitar, a song that was clearly very heavily influenced by Stairway to Heaven and Jimmy Page's solo in that. It's, for one thing, it's got the similar, or almost the same chord progression. There are some differences, but it's almost the same. And there are clearly some licks that are, that are taken of it, very reminiscent of it. Anyway, it's, it's a great solo in its own right. We'll show you the wrinkles and some of the differences. Quick shout out to Matt D, who has asked for this a number of times. Uh, there is in this solo an example of what I think you call the Claude Bougian triplets. Um, so look for that. I'll uh, mention that in the lesson. Hey, if you like this, click the like button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe for one of these every week. We'll see you in just a second and go over what I just played. Okay, gang, let's go over this note for note. First things first, you'll want to download the tab. Um, in, from the link in the description below. Uh, it's going to make your life a lot easier because as I refer to strings and frets and all that, you know, it's easier to follow that way. Okay, that's number one. Number two is the sound. Uh, main thing is you want a lot of sustain, so put a lot of gain on it. All right, you want a lot of sustain on this solo because uh, there's a few notes you really want to hold for a while. Okay, I've also got a little bit of reverb, and also clearly I'm using a very shreddy guitar. I'm playing out of the neck, uh, I'm sorry, out of the bridge pickup. Uh, but you don't need one of these types of guitars. You could use a regular old Les Paul, or you could use a Strat, or whatever. But just get a decent amount of gain on it, tiny amount of reverb, and you're good to go. All right, next thing, uh, let's talk briefly about the chord progression we're going to be soloing over. The main part is kind of the stairway to heaven-y, or better yet, um, a dire straits, sultans of swing. You can think about that. Um, the chord progression is like so. Two of these. Two of those, okay? And that is a D minor to C to B flat. And then back up. Now, yes, if you listen carefully to the record, he's jazzing it up a bit by playing a little, a couple of hammer-ons like so. But basically, it's D minor, C, B flat, and because of that, we're going to be playing a lot of the song in D minor. Okay, so D minor pentatonic is going to fall into this. If you think that way, the scale of D minor is going to work as well. After two of those, however, it does one of these. It does a G chord, and then an A chord, and then back to the riff again. Okay, so because of that G and the A there, it gives it a harmonic minor flavor. And if you haven't yet experienced this, let me show you the difference between the D minor scale and the D harmonic minor scale. So we're going to start up here. I'm going to start on the high and then go low. So if you think about the D minor pentatonic blues box, the one that we all know here, starting on the 10th fret, right, because that's a D. So the blues box would be this. Okay, we all know that one. Here's the next one. Here's the D minor scale. So we're going to add some notes into that. Okay, now the difference in the D harmonic minor, you'll notice it right away, is there's a couple of notes that really are very different, okay? 
And he's going to use those throughout that solo once in a while. And I'll play the D harmonic minor scale now. So you can see it's this, it's this C sharp or D flat. And we're going to use that note a couple of times throughout the solo. So watch for that one, okay? All right, here we go. Let's go over line by line uh, this solo. We're going to start here on the third string, 14th fret, and we're going to play this line. Okay, starting out with a real signature note to lead it off. What a great note to lead this off. 14th, bending it up a full step. And then basically it's just a blues lick after that. So it's this 10th on the 3rd to the 12th on the 4th and then back up to the 12th on the 3rd. Standard blues move. And then walking down. Some vibrato on that. Last line, last part of the line is this. A little slide from the, on the 5th string. Uh, from the 12th to the 10th, and then walking down, ending on that D strong note, right? D is going to be a strong note in a D minor. Okay, that's the first line. Let me play it slowly one more time. Next line, we're going to hear that minor scale here, starting out with the first note right here. All right, now this is a pure D minor uh, uh, line here. We're starting out on the third string, ninth fret. They won't find that in the minor pentatonic, okay? And then coming up, a little hammer on and off action, and we end up here on the 4th string, 8th fret. Remember to give those ending notes lots of vibrato. Sounds really cool. Okay, here we go. Next line's a little tough one, so just watch out for that. Okay. Okay, now this is really two lines, um, but uh, they're blended together because there's a little movement there that's kind of interesting. So anyway, the way I play this is, is this. We have essentially the same hammer on and pull off action again to get down to this, but we're going to bend up a full step on the fifth string. That's hard to do. So like so. And then two of these. That's why you need a lot of sustain on this guitar, because you're going to be pulling that up twice. Try and get that a whole step. That takes a little bit of grit and maybe a little bit of uh, end of the finger loss. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then, be just before it dies out, we're going to let it come down to the eighth again and slide up to the tenth, like so. Okay, like that. When you have a little more volume, you actually hear it. So we're going to slide up and then play this little run. Okay. Okay, and that's just a slide up on that D minor pentatonic scale. Ending here on the 12th, we're going to have a whole step bend. So here's the whole line again. I'll try and play it slowly. And even better yet, if you don't have to pick that last one, if you can just slide it up and then bend it, it sounds smoother and it's, and it's really good. Okay, here, in my opinion, is the next, is the most difficult line. No, it's not the fastest, but it's hardest to get in your brain about what to do. And um, I think I got it, but, uh, you know, who knows? It's close enough, and in the end, all I really need is the right tempo to get me to the right place. Okay, so here it is, right here. Here's the next line, going from when you're already bent up. So um, let me, actually, let me, just to keep my bearings, 
I'll play the previous line and then go into the next one, okay? Very tough line and very long. It's important to get that whole line in, and I think this is this is one of the greatest uh, lines in this solo for sure. Okay, so we're going to start from that bent note, and we're going to uh, imagine that we've got this bent note on the third up, and we're going to use a standard sort of country lick, right? <laughs> But here in a minor pentatonic sound, it sounds more, a little more uh, edgy or darker, and uh, it's a very rock and roll thing now. So um, we're going to bend that up. Uh, we're going to keep that note up bent on the 12th, third string, and then play the 13th and bend up the 12th again. We're going to do that twice. The third time, we're going to hold it up, and when we play the 13th, on the second on the second string we're going to bend we're going to let that 12th bend down back to the 12th so like so we're going to do two of the bends up third time we're going to bring it down like so okay back to the 13th on that second you're using that as a pedal point and now we're going to play 10 hammer on to 12th on the third back to that 13th on the second okay and then the second time we're gonna hammer again on the 12th I'm sorry on the 10th to the 12th so we're gonna do that two times and uh, we're gonna play the 13th again all right so let me play everything up to that point all right I know there's a lot to get in okay from there you play 13th on the first, 13th on the second, and then you got a pre-bend on the 12th and pull it down. And now we're playing our standard blues lick again, 10th on the third to the 12th on the fourth, back up to the 12th on the third, 10th on the, on the fourth, 10th on the third, I'm sorry, and 12th on the fourth lots of vibrato. Let's play what we've got up to that point, okay? We've still got a little bit more to go and end the line, and it ends on a cool thing, all right? So we're going to do that. So let's do that whole thing up to there. So we'll start with our bend on the 12th from the previous line. That is a hard one to get down and remember and to get the timing right. So just keep that in mind. From there on, it's pretty smooth sailing, and we're just going to kind of walk down to this really cool, way cool bend uh, that we have on the sixth string. So it goes like this then after that. Okay, so that starts out, um, that's going to start on, on the fourth. Uh, fourth string 10th fret, uh, fifth string 12th, and slide down to the 10th, 8th, and now the rest is on the 6th string. It goes like this. So that's easy, except that you've got a 6th string bend that's a one and a half step bend. You're trying to bend to this note. Okay, so that's a, a one and a half step bend. That is not easy, okay, on the sixth string. So grit your teeth and just get down to it, okay? So here it is. And give it lots of vibrato. Okay, here now is that line in its entirety, okay? Here we go. That's it. Now let's do the next line. The next line is one of these recognizable things and everybody goes ooh and ah. And it is a cool line, but it just takes a little bit of dexterity and practice. 
So this is one of those lines where you're playing, this is a nice little finger exercise, okay? Here's the line right here. All right, so that whole beginning part where it's like... That's really just a finger exercise, and that, Matt, is what the Claude Bougian uh, triplets are, <laughs> okay? If you're following still. And if you don't know that reference, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter, okay? So um, we're going to start here. The hardest part about this first ascending lick is the fact that it's not all in one position, so we have to figure out sort of where to switch the position. And uh, so here's how it goes. It's going to start out... <laughs> So that's 10, 8, 10 on the 6th. And then we're going to do 8, 10, 8 on the 5th, 10 on the 6th, 8 on the 5th. Okay, and now after that we are going to skip a note. So we're not going to play this one right here, uh, which might be the normal thing. Instead of playing that, what we're going to do is we're going to shift position into the regular old uh, pentatonic minor blues box, okay? So uh, after that, after this, then we're going to shift up to this on the 12th, on the 5th, okay? And we're going to just play this this lower note, which is the 10th. So we, so we kind of skipped over one of them, right? So it's going like this. The rest of it's a simple pattern all the way up to the end. last part we play this note which is the same but then we play the top note instead of this again instead of instead of playing here we'll play this okay so here it is whole thing slowly all the way up to the top here we go Practice it very slowly, you'll get it fast. Okay, here's how you come out of that line. It's a great, come, the coming out of this line is really great. We're going to bend on the 13th, this is basically just standard uh, blues with a touch of D minor, okay? So we're going to start with, uh, with the uh, after, after. We're going to play this right here, 13th on the second string, bend up a whole step. So play the 13th bend up, play it normally, and then play uh, the 10th. Notice that I'm giving, I'm trying to give those a little bit of extra feeling by oomph by you know playing hard with my right-handed pick. Oops. And then we'll bend up on the 13th a whole step on the first string. Okay, and then walk down the D minor scale, and this is what makes it sound really cool. So whole step bend on the 13th first string, then the whole, then just the 13th, then the 12th, then the 10th, then the, uh, then on the second string the 13th, and then the 10th, and ending up on the 11th, which is a nice little note. So here's that whole part of that line. All right, so here's the whole line in its entirety. Another cool line to get down the whole thing. So that's why I'm spending a little bit of extra time on it. Here's the whole thing in its entirety slowly. All right. It's all down here from hill from here, folks. Nothing really tough about the rest of it, although there's a little bit of fast runs. So here we go. Uh, from the next line would be. There's that note, right? So here we're taking on the uh, the D minor scale on the eleventh here, and we're just kind of walking down. 
and then up from that ninth again on the third string, we encountered that note before, ending up on that harmonic minor note, which is fourth string, eleventh fret, uh, D flat. Okay. All right. That's it for now. Now it, you let that you let that give that lots of vibrato. And then if you want to be kind of, there's a subtle effect on the record where he, 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 he hits the, this note right here before he moves on, which is the 14th fret on that fourth string. Okay, but then he goes into a series of uh, little two string arpeggios, okay? So the first of those is this. Okay, there's 10 of those. What that is, is that's a D minor arpeggio. Okay, so we are playing uh, on the first string, we're playing uh, the 13th fret, pulling off to the 10th, and then playing the 10th on the second string. Okay, like so. All right, now I like to have an upstroke on the first string and then uh, a downstroke on the second string, readying myself for that upstroke again. You may prefer it a different way and do all downstrokes. That's fine too. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, that works fine. Okay, after ten of those, um, we play an extra note here on the thirteenth on the first string, and then slide up and play this arpeggio. Okay, and that is. Um, that is uh, playing on the first string, we're playing the 17th fret, pulling off to the 13th, and on the second string we'll play the 15th. This is a hard one to finger, so do take your time playing this one. The first one's very easy to finger, the second one's a little bit hard, um, and you'll play five of those. One, two, three, four, five, and then this note right here, which is a 17th, Okay, so it sounds like this. All right, that's how it sounds sped up. Slow down, it sounds like this. And then the last one is this, and we're gonna slide up to this, and we're playing, uh, this is the 20th fret. You know, it's funny, I just, after, after a while, your ear just gets the right places, so, but this happens to be the 20th fret. We're gonna pull off to, the, to this 17th, and on the second string, we're going to play the 18th. But we're going to play it double time, okay? So it's sort of like this. We're going to play one, two, three, four. We're going to play that four times. And then we're going to bend up on that 20th a full step on the first string. Sounds better when you have more volume and a little bit more gain, all right? And then we're going to walk down just like we did before. So that's a 20th full step bend, then 20th, then the 17th, and then the 18th. All right, and now we're in the home stretch right here. So you can see that's the same thing that we were playing before, all right? We're just playing it in a different uh, place. Let your ears be the guides there. That is, on that last note, that is, or that last phrase is, on the second string, 17, 18, 20, 18, 17, third string, uh, 19, and then 18. And then ending up on the 20th on the second fret on the second string. Sounds like this. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Uh, the home stretch is is this. It goes like this. There's a, it's a bunch of chord play. So that's real straightforward. Well, let me play the whole line. Okay.
Okay, that's the whole thing. Think about it this way. We're doing triads of the of of the of the regular Okay, so we're starting out with that and that's just a D minor triad, first three strings, tenth fret, four strokes, and then we'll play uh, on the first string the twelfth and then the tenth again, like so. Now we're just going to play the C triad and do basically the same thing, same strokes. So we're doing basically the same thing, two frets down, except it's a major triad, not a minor triad, C major. So that's spelled... Uh, Third, second, and first string, respectively, we've got 9, 8, 8, as opposed to 10, 10, 10, okay? First one's 10, 10, 10. Third one's 9, 8, 8. Okay, now, this last part, this is a G major triad, right? Spelled, <laughs> um, well, let's not worry about the notes here. Let's talk about the frets. Third string, we've got the seventh, fourth string, the eighth, first string, the seventh. And first time we'll play the top two strings. Now the bottom two strings on that. So first are the, the top two strings and then strings three and two. That whole part sounds like this. Okay, final stretch here, gang. These are the last lines. So we're going to basically, it, it ends, it, the end of the solo has a little bit different um, uh, sound to it. It basically goes B flat to C, B flat to C, B flat to C to D minor, like so. So he's playing over those changes. And what he, what he decides to do is just basically play arpeggios over that. Um, and so we've got that. We, so this is what's going to happen. We're going to play a B-flat arpeggio here on the, on the sixth, uh, in the sixth position here. So on the first three strings, that would be seven, seven, six. Starting from the top, however, we're going to come down. Let me turn down the gain because we don't need it on this one. Now we're going to move up to a C triad, which is just two frets above, same shape. Now we're going to play another B flat triad, but this one is on the first three strings is uh, third string, 10th fret, four, uh, second string, 11th, first string, 10th again. Again, we're going to play it from the first string down to the third. To get the C from the B flat, we're just going to move up two frets. So that whole thing sounds like this. Final line is a unison bend. We're just going to play this note. Think about it this way. On the first string, we're playing this F on the 13th, then the G on the 15th, and then the A on the 17th. But we're not playing it in a boring way. We're going to play a unison bend. So the way a unison bend works is you take on the second string and the first string. You keep that first string fretted at the 13th. And we're going to play on the second string, we're going to play the 16th and bend it up a whole step, like so. It's Ted Nugent strangleholds all over those, man. All right. So if you, hear, if you hear that, we're bending up to this note, which is the same as the 13th there, you see? Again, two, two frets up. And finally, that last one. Give it lots of vibrato at the end. Here is that last line. And congratulations, we are through that whole solo. That's a toughie. Practice it. Uh, have fun with it, though. That's the main thing.